Morning, you lot. <clears throat> I spent most of yesterday flat out on the sofa, feeling very unwell and sorry for myself indeed. So, uh, feeling a bit better today. I've had something to eat and uh, I thought I'd come outside, just get a bit of fresh air and do something really simple on, in the garage. Uh, so, I'm going to have a look at the lathe because the cross light stopped working a short time ago. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it yet, but uh, all I'll do is give it a clean up, take it apart and uh, see if we can see see what's wrong. Time for a bit of um, <coughs> stop motion. You can see that, it looks like it's been hit with a hammer at the end. Enough. I think it comes down to this block and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's going to be stripped. I think that's going to be the deal. We'll take it off and we'll see what we can see. It probably would have been easier if I'd taken these off but I didn't know what they did and I didn't want it to just explode in my hands. It's like. suggest that the thread on that is shot to bits, which is interesting. The problem is we get a bit further along where the lead screws are used a lot more, it probably get even worse. The thread size it is. Look at that, that's yeah, that's why it's slipping. better than last weekend. <coughs> the um, managed to uh, get a few bits and bobs ordered. The left-handed taps arrived. Uh, M10 by 1.25 in case anybody else has got an SC4 like I've got but uh, no material yet so what I'm going to do is I've, as I've realised that the uh, the mechanism on the front, the, the turny wheel, turny wheel um, he's, uh, he's not actually associated with getting the rest of it apart, the, the lead screw nut and things. I'll get the front bit all reassembled um, and then we can just wait and be patient for the rest of the material to arrive. What I'll probably do then is go and have a bit of a tinker with the bike, um, get the carbs off, I think it's probably the next thing, take it apart, get the uh, ultrasonic tank on, warm it up and uh, we'll see if we can dunk some bits and get some stuff clean. So, let's crack on. Looks like there's water in there. Weird. So, as usual, we've got a bit overexcited. Brass turned up. Uh, <coughs> I was indoors, Mr. Postman dropped it through the letterbox, makes quite a hefty noise as it hits the floor. Uh, I got overexcited and started doing stuff and didn't film, so I'll tell you what I've been doing. Uh, of course, the best way to make a lead screw nut for a lathe is to use a lathe. Um, this is <laughs> some of the situations where, what came first? How did the man make the machine? 
So I can't face off the, the two sides. What I need to do is have a, a square face on both sides so that I can then get it set up on the pillar drill, uh, mark it up and drill it. But of course I need square ends to be able to drill it square so that when I put it on the bottom of the cross slide it sits square and it doesn't pull on the lead screw. Um, so I put a fresh disc on the disc sander, or on the belt sander sorry, uh, and I've just spent a while spent a while using the square, squaring it up in both directions to make sure it's where it needs to be and then running it <clears throat> against the face until I've got a clear, uh, clear set of, um, of lines, marks from the disc it's very easy to see where they go turn it 390 degrees and touch it again and I can see which side it's faced on and that lets me know if there's any tiny adjustments that I need to make to where I've just put up the setup bit um, I've got it to this point here, so if I can't close to the camera, hopefully we'll be able to see this. I'll go to the other side, so let's have a look. There we go. Come on, focus for me, focus, focus. Here we go, so, you can see that there's an even set of cross hatchings on there, where I've touched it in both directions, and it looks pretty clean. So now, if we do this, come on, focus for me, focus. If I push this button, let's see if we can get it to. Right, let's try that. Hey, it's better. Right. So you can see pretty much zip all gap there. Pretty much zip there. It looks. It does look good. Yeah, so I'm pretty comfortable with that. Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with that. So, what I'll be able to do now is trim it off. Might even make it slightly longer than this one. There's nothing in the way, and the more thread I've got, the more thread there should be supporting the lead screw. Tempted to change the design as well, because this one, this one uses a, um... let's have another look, right. So this one uses a split design with a pair of small set screws to take up the slack in the threads and so you just tighten them up it separates the two pieces of thread um, and just pulls against the lead screw and I'm tempted to try and make a sprung setup so it uses a spring and a, a, uh, a second piece which would sit out here and that should then give us um, some sprung tension against the threads I'll have a think I'll have a think. I've got springs and stuff I can do it with. It's just uh, deciding exactly the best way of doing it. So, I need to cut it next, face off the other end, and start drilling holes. sequence here. I've uh, been drilling, messing about, cutting. I had to make this significantly shorter in the end. Um, 
just because it carried on hooking up on the threads. So this is basically ready to go, two M4 to, uh, holes drilled and tapped, everything chamfered. I had to cut the bottom off as well because it was too deep. But that now fits on the lead screw. Lead screw's clean. I've just stoned off the edges of these, these two bits of casting. So I think what we can do is reassemble it now. I think we're there. We're ready to go. somewhere because I didn't realise I'd uh, run out of space for my memory card so everything's back together we've got zero play like zero play I've had the dial gauge on it um, it's tight but it moves freely there's no it's not sticking anywhere machined up some uh, some steel and it's the best finish I've ever had look at that you know what do you reckon it's not bad, is it? I'd suggest. Can I focus on that one? Pretty good. Pretty good. That's just some mild steel, but. Very pleased. So, I didn't put any lash control in there at all in the end. The thread ended up cutting so nice that. Uh, as I say, there's no play. I've tightened up the the jibs. Jibs? Gibbs. Gibbs? Jibs. I don't know. I've tightened up the slides so that everything is uh, is moving nicely and it's all clean. At some point that uh, lead nut will wear. Um, but at that point I'll slice it like the original one, put the cut in it and, um, and adjust it. But for now, it's pretty good. I think I'm going to buy some indexable tooling, some carbide tooling, and see see if that helps things. I'll be able to put up the uh, the speed because it, it needs like a factor of ten faster speed, which would be good because this lathe prefers to go at a higher speed than a lower speed. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so yeah, blades back in action, which is great. It means that we'll be able to do all those little jobs which I've been putting off. Uh, hopefully we'll have some some more stuff coming up. Now, I've been working on the the carbs in the meantime, popping bits on and off and on. I've got the float chambers off and things, but uh, we'll do another video on that one separately so that we can uh, keep track of it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, some more soon.